guys, welcome back to Set Streets and Needs. I'm Chris Bauer. I am here in West Branch, Iowa, standing from the Herbert Hoover Presidential Museum and Library. This is the second of my Presidential Library and Museum Visits series. There will hopefully be 14 by the end of it. Um, I'm gonna go check all these out, but today I'm gonna be focusing on the Herbert Hoover uh, Library. It's really unique in the Presidential Libraries because surrounding it, it's on the grounds of um, a living history section of the town. And when they opened the museum, uh, Harry S. Truman actually was here with him when they opened it, right here in West Branch. Herbert Hoover was still alive. Um, they opened it in 1960. I'll, I'll find the date when I'm in there. Uh, I know it was in the 1960s. But uh, yeah, anyway, they opened it here in West Branch, Iowa, where he was born and raised. And I'm gonna go in and check out the library and check out some of the little living history uh, points of interest they have here on the grounds, and I hope you guys will join me. Let's travel. I'm Chris Bauer, and I am an art slinger. I travel around the U.S. selling artwork at comic and anime conventions, and while I'm there, I like to check out cool sites, eat great food, and see all the places my favorite movies and TV shows are made. Welcome to Sets, Streets, and Eats. Right away when they start the exhibit, we're in basically foreign lands. And that's because a lot of Hoover's um, jobs uh, for the previous three presidents before he was elected was traveling the world, dealing with food and hunger and famine. Um, he was uh, the uh, commissioner uh, or the food commissioner uh, under Woodrow Wilson. And part of that thing was just understanding how food supplies and food chains work. Um, it, you know, he discovered a lot that we still use today, uh, and it's it's a, a lot of important research. And he did it even later. Uh, he was in charge of it under uh, uh, Harry S. Truman and Dwight D. Eisenhower. So he definitely had a lot of experience with worldwide hunger, famine, and understanding of all that, and how to where to get food to, and how who needed it the most. Um, he was very well versed in that. So this uh, deals with a lot of his work in Russia during the famine in Russia in the early 1920s. Another interesting fact about uh, Hoover is that he served in cabinet positions and under, uh, in different capacities uh, under five different U.S. presidents. It's pretty amazing, but uh, he started with Woodrow Wilson, then he was a part of the cabinets of uh, Warren G. Harding. He was only president for two years and then he died, which I'm not 100% sure why he died. So if you know the answer to that, pop that in the comments below. Um, I know he only served two years, so it was something unexpected and I know he wasn't assassinated. So um, let me know in the comments below. Then um, Calvin Coolidge, uh, of course, took over for Harding and was president until Herbert Hoover was elected president in 1928. This is his early life here in West Branch, Iowa. As a young boy, I'm sure he had a very <clears throat> Typical American experience for the late 1800s Victorian era. Those are his parents. Oh, look at that. A little toy train belonged to his brother Bert. Wow, that's cool. Old sewing machine. My mom probably made all their clothes. When he was 10 years old, both of his parents died. Um, and he moved, I guess him and his siblings most likely, moved with his, uh, to his uncle's place in Oregon. 
which of course where he got into mining. His uncle was a miner and he started working in the office when he was 13. <coughs> this is a picture from his time at Stanford. He started in Stanford when I think he was 16 or 17. He was very smart. Obviously on the surveying squad, he already had experience with it being in the mining field. Out of Stanford, he took a job in London for a mining company. Traveled the world. Right before he took his job in London, he married his college sweetheart, Lou. They were married till the day of her death in the 1940s, I think 1946. Oh, that's cool. They have her ring, too. Wow. That's neat. And the shawl she was wearing for their wedding. After London, they spent a lot of time in China. Uh, they were there for the Boxer Revolution, actually. There's a famous picture of Lou standing with a cannon during the Boxer Revolution. Right here. or Boxer Rebellion, I'm sorry, I'm using the word revolution wrong. It was rebellion. Crazy to be in a whole other country during such an important event in their country. The uh, Hoovers actually were on the uh, RMS Lusitania a few years before it was sunk by German U-boats, really famous ship sinking. That's cool. And that Stonehenge. Oh, can you imagine traveling the world at 19, in 1900? That's amazing. Or 1908. Probably that whole decade. Wow. <laughs> that was Lou's Kodak camera. Wow. That's cool. They definitely had a passion for helping people with hunger and famine and getting help to them, getting them food. That's very admirable and that was a lifelong endeavor for both Lou and Herbert Hoover. Wow. Pretty amazing. So the event that really projected Herbert Hoover into public service was in 1914 during World War I. Uh, the Germans and the British were of course in their trenches, but what was between their front lines was Belgium. And Belgium, because each side had cut off all supplies to anything getting in to keep it away from the other side, Belgians were starving to death. Um, they're pretty much 80% of all of their goods and services and anything that was coming in or out was gone. Um, and they were in a really bad spot being right in the middle of the warfare. So Woodrow Wilson asked Herbert Hoover to take over as and coordinate the food relief effort. <clears throat> it was like a $12 million a month food relief effort, which was pretty substantial in 1914. <coughs> So, at the time, of course, he was a successful mining uh, engineer, and he was uh, basically forced to make a choice, and uh, it actually changed his life. He uh, never went back to mining. He stayed in public service after that, um, but uh, he spent a lot of his own money even helping people, getting food there, buying food worldwide um, to get it over there uh, to those people. And they estimate at least 10 million people were saved from starvation by his efforts. So that ignited the fuse for him to uh, be in public service for three different presidents before he ran himself and, of course, became president in 1928. Oh, that's cool. They have a life mask of Herbert Hoover that was done for the uh, 
Versailles, Versailles Peace Conference in Paris, 1919, the end of World War One. Neat. Wow, Life Master is so cool. I've mentioned on this channel before, but there's a place in Metropolis, Illinois, a museum uh, that's not open anymore, but in the back room, they never had them displayed, but back in the 1980s, the owner of the museum bought out a Hollywood uh, effects shop that had gone out of business and he bought all their uh, part of that was all their life face molds that they would use to make prosthetics and stuff for uh, actors but they had them all the way going back to the 1930s and they just had a who's who from the 30s to the 80s of every movie star and they had a life face um, they're really neat to look at because it's such a moment of vulnerability you know their eyes are closed it's almost like a sleeping mask but uh, they're I don't know, they're really, really cool. Uh, there's nothing about their face that's projecting anything or, or, you know, trying to stay good for the camera. It's just a moment where they're in the complete dark of having this stuff over their face. And uh, it's like how they really look. It's pretty neat to see them. Oh, that's cool. First television broadcast. So it was basically video phone in 1927. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Sports of the era. Literature, of course, movie stars. W.C. Fields, Al Jolson, Will Rogers. <laughs> Hollywood. Oh, yeah, the little tramp, Charlie Chaplin. Wow. Henry Ford and his famous Model T. Charles Lindbergh, who crossed the Atlantic, but also made famous because his baby was kidnapped and later found dead. Uh, there's some appliances from the era. So it looks like stroke is what killed Harding. And then Calvin Coolidge was vice president and took over as president. Probably his most famous contribution to American life uh, that's still around today, of course, is what's behind me, the Hoover Dam. Uh, the Hoover Dam basically brought water to the west, which right now is in danger. Uh, Lake Mead, which is what the Hoover Dam stopped up several, uh, one or two rivers, I can't remember. Um, and uh, the Lake Mead was formed. Hoover Dam would allow that water through at a regulated pace thereby giving not only electricity, um, but also much needed water out west, being a big reservoir. Of course, Vegas, that would sprout up right after that, uh, definitely benefited from it and still does today. But uh, today the Lake Mead is at historic lows, um, which is kind of scary. Uh, but one cool thing about it is looking at all the boat boats that have sunk there since the late 30s all the way up till now they're all exposed so you can literally walk the lake bed and see boats that have been on the bottom of the the lake for decades which is kind of neat well there's the hoover dam also a cool place to visit if you're ever out there i've definitely been there a couple times it's pretty awesome
newspaper ad had posted before the fact that very day. Never before in the history of the world had a human voice sounded simultaneously in so many ears. What would he say? By temperament, Herbert Hoover was the last man to give himself over to the fever of such a moment. He stepped to the microphone, knowing full well that not all Americans had shared equally in the prosperity he was duty-bound to celebrate. So, as bad timing would have it, uh, 10 months after he was sworn in as president in October 1929, the stock market crashed, causing the Great Depression. Uh, the Great Depression would last a decade. Uh, it wouldn't, we wouldn't come out of it until uh, Re Roosevelt was president. Um, sadly, a lot of his presidency was trying to get people jobs and get employment stabilized and food shortages and all that. So um, I'm sure it went to why he was only a single term president, but uh, it was a, a sad bit of timing to have that happen 10 months after you're elected. Nineteen thirty two election where he lost to Roosevelt. So this ball is representing Hoover Ball. Hoover Ball was created by one of his physicians. Basically it was a game of keep away with multiple people uh, throwing a medicine ball to each other on one team and the other team trying to snag the ball. Uh, it was developed for fitness. Uh, there's a video on YouTube of watching Hoover and his family play it on the White House lawn. Um, it would probably develop some muscles if you played it every day. Those medicine balls weren't messing around. And they're throwing it around pretty easily. <laughs> this is the section about his wife, Lou. Lou Hoover was born not too far from here. She was also from Iowa. Um, <clears throat> Of course, they met at Stanford, and they were married for her entire life. He died about 20 years after her. She was clearly the family photographer. Lots of pictures of her holding cameras. A lady's pistol, Browning 25 caliber. So Lou had a weapons collection, apparently. Had rifles, sabers, swords, hand weapons. As the story goes, Mr. Hoover suggested she collect symbolic objects of the 40 different countries they had lived in, worked in, or visited. Common in all these countries were servants and weapons. Lou chose the more practical alternative. <laughs> That's funny. That's pretty cool. Even back then, they had child leashes. <laughs> Good call. <laughs> Lou did a lot of work with the Girl Scouts. Them making their cookies. Which they make pretty good money with. Yeah, the banking crisis of 1933, also during the Great Depression. <clears throat> But that was, he started reorganizing it, and then Roosevelt had to finish it because he lost the election, and Roosevelt won, and the rest is history. Wrote many books through his lifetime. All these are by him. And, uh, there's more than just what's here, too, because I know there's a couple of titles that aren't even up here that he wrote. Then he was president of the Boys Club uh, until his death. Did a lot of stuff with Boy Scouts of America, Boys Club of America. These are some of the gifts that were given to them during his presidency.
that's pretty neat which is exactly what these presidential libraries and museums are for to house that stuff Truman was a very close friend of Hoover's and came to this very building's opening back in the 1960s, I think 1961, 62, something like that. <clears throat> Clearly Hoover enjoyed fly fishing, something I could never get into. My dad tried it when I was a kid though. I did remember him practicing in the lawn. I would watch him practice fly fishing, just whipping it back and forth, back and forth. It's really an interesting uh, way to fish. Okay, so here's the library dedication. That was in 1962. So, of course, Harry S. Truman, Herbert Hoover, they were all here right outside the parking lot here. And uh, they dedicated this library and opened it. It's been open ever since. Oh, so he even consulted with Richard Nixon. Oh, that was back when he was vice president. That would have been when he was with the Eisenhower administration, so that makes sense. So this is where his life was finished in a suite at the Waldorf Astoria. That's where he died. With his voting, his travels, and what he called his unending public chores, former President Hoover was anything but retired. For the last 25 years of his life, Hoover lived here in Suite 31A of New York's elegant Waldorf Towers. He rose each morning at 7, then planted himself at a desk in the living room he could sit here, where he would work up to 10 hours a day on books, articles, government reports, and a vast correspondence with the American people. In an exchange with a worried reporter, he affirmed his faith that America would survive the Cold War crisis, presumably as it had the earlier Great Depression. I'd like to ask you if you think that we are working hard enough in this country, and if we have enough determination and will to stand against the South my feeling is that we have involved ourselves in too many crises and that our major job today is to clean up our own household. That uh, we're in more imminent danger from internal causes than we are from the Cold War. Boy, he was ahead of his time on that opinion. Whew, that's still prevalent today. <clears throat> Lots of different equipment and spiling cabinets that he had at the Waldorf. <clears throat> he was in charge of two different commissions uh, dealing with food, worldwide food and hunger and famine and all that under uh, uh, Eisenhower and Truman. <sighs> Definitely involved right to the end. So he died in 1963. <clears throat> Of course, was laid in state for several days in the rotunda, as all presidents are. But he was buried here, and we're going to go see that next. Pain buttons are cool. Let me get a couple of those. Keychains. Shot glasses. Shot, 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 shots. Of course, he was around for prohibition, so maybe that is appropriate. T shirts. That's pretty cool.
So this is where the president and former first lady are buried. Hoover died in 1964 and uh, five days later was buried right here. They moved Lou's. Lou was, of course, passed 20 years earlier. So they moved Lou's remains from California to here to be next to him. They've been here ever since. Together again. <clears throat> Very beautiful memorial. You can look behind it's right on that hillside overlooking the rest of the grounds. And uh, very nice, very simple, which is, according to people that knew him, exactly how he was. Simple, direct, and to the point. So, behind the museum, there's a little pavilion here for picnics that was built by the Boy Scouts of America in 1954. And to break it in, or to inaugurate it, I guess, they actually held Hoover's birthday, 80th birthday party right here. He stood right there next to a cake in a very famous photo with this uh, barbecue behind him. And uh, that was in 1954 when this opened and it's been here ever since. It's pretty well preserved, pretty nice. Boy Scouts do good work. that Herbert Hoover attended as a young boy where he learned his arithmetic and his alphabet. You can just walk right in. Let's go check it out. Hung their coats up here. Oh, that's cool. Huh. That's neat. For those cold Iowa winters, Portraits of George Washington and Abraham Lincoln. He learned honesty is the best policy. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And at first you don't succeed, try and try again. Ah, those are good rules to live by. Ah, oh, look at those old, the old uh, book handles where you would strap up book straps that's what they basically call them that had a little handle on it that's pretty neat you don't see those much anymore or ever honestly it's a charming little town a little piece of history here so it's got a little main street oh it's beautiful main street complete with little hitching posts for the horses in front of each house with a little gazebo at the top end of it. Right down there at the end of the street there, you hang it right to the Presidential Museum. I haven't mentioned yet how gorgeous it is out today. So right now there's heat wave hitting most of America. And it's hot here too, but because I'm used to humidity back home in Kentucky, having very little humidity is amazing. But it's safe to say this is their street that he grew up on. And it's called Downey Street. And he was born and raised here on Downey Street. It's still a dirt street with wood sidewalks. But this is where he was born. <clears throat> the J.C. Hoover House, the birthplace cottage. Tight and cozy, as they say. Little trundle beds and crib. Man, look at the before box springs. They had those ropes that would basically hold up the bed and the mattress. That's pretty cool. <laughs> we 
wood stove, pantry. I'm gonna say because we're in Iowa, storm cellar. Well, I definitely found this to be pretty educational. I didn't know much about Herbert Hoover before coming here. Um, I knew the name, I knew he was a president. I didn't know he was the 31st president. Um, and it's neat to uh, see the, the grounds. I like the grounds, the way they added or kept things. And then they put his uh, museum and library right at the end of it. It's pretty neat, you can walk around and bring a picnic lunch eat one of the pavilions that he himself ate at before. And uh, yeah, it's pretty neat. There's a lot of history here, right here in West Branch, Iowa. And uh, the museum was very reasonable as most of the presidential museums and libraries are. I think it was $10 for an adult, less for children, discounts for, you know, a host of other military or AAA or whatever. Well, I hope you enjoyed this visit to the Herbert Hoover presidential library and museum i don't know which is my next one but i think i'm heading to texas soon so there's three or four different ones maybe three different presidential libraries in texas so i'm going to try to hit one of those soon and i'll put that up when i do until then we'll see you on down the road bye now